Welcome to the Moon Manifesting Podcast. I'm Kyra Howarth, your host. Here on the show, we talk all about manifesting your dreams with the power of the moon so you can use the cosmic energy to transform your life. Do you dream of having more followers on your social media account? So while big numbers can seem really impressive, they definitely aren't everything. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at exactly how you can manifest more followers on your social media platforms, whether that's Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, or whatever, uh, but while staying true and authentic to yourself. Because I do see so many people out there who are building these massive followings, but Like you meet them in real life and they're, you know, not who they seem to be online. So authenticity is super important. And yeah, we're going to be diving into this in today's episode. So the thing is, you might feel like uh, social media is pretty rubbish right now. Like your reach is really low. You've been posting consistently and your content is like, let's say it, like it's amazing, right? Like you're producing really top notch stuff out there and spreading like a really important message. And you're like really feeling like you're posting from the heart. You're just sharing things that um, are just so true to you. But like, you know, maybe you only get likes from your mom, your best friend, um, and maybe some like other random scammy account that says like, check your profile for a DM type of thing. So the actual problem here is not that social media is rubbish and that Instagram is like, you know, shadow banning you or whatever. The problem actually could be your visibility blocks. Okay, so sometimes like, you know, we're trying to really put ourselves out there into the world, but it's actually this internal visibility block that's holding us back from expanding our reach and from being seen. Like maybe you have this underlying fear about being seen or about this message that you're sharing out into the world. Maybe you're you have this underlying embarrassment or something about your social media profile or even about the work that you're doing. So maybe you're even just afraid of what others might think. So there's a lot of reasons why you might maybe having this visibility block. Uh, But the thing is, if we can overcome this visibility block, it is going to have an amazing impact on your reach. It's going to help you expand your following um, and all that. Okay, so it sounds pretty easy, right? We just need to overcome these visibility blocks. So I'm going to go into this um, shortly, but first I just want to share my own story with you um, because you might be thinking, well, like, who's this lady to tell me how to grow my social media accounts? Um, So in case you don't know me, hi, my name's Kyra and uh, welcome to the Moon Manifesting Podcast. So if you've been around for a while, then you may already know quite a bit about me, but uh, what you may not know is that I have actually grown quite a few social media accounts to quite uh, like relatively high followings, like tens of thousands of followers on these separate accounts, like in totally different um, industries and niches and all that sort of thing. So I have a lot of experience with this. I'm going to walk you through um, exactly how I gained my followers. And then I'm going to share with you three tips soon about how you can manifest more followers for your own accounts while staying true and authentic to yourself. So one of my first Instagram accounts, um, it was called Vida La Vegan. Uh, So it was a vegan food blogging account. And I grew this account to about 13,000 followers. Um, So this was not my first um, Instagram account, but it was like my first sort of uh, business Instagram account, I think. Um, I had started off uh, like with a personal account as everyone does and yeah, I started seeing like, you know, people can use this for business. And anyway, I decided I want to be a vegan food blogger. Um, but the thing was, it was very picture perfect. Like I was spending a lot of time perfecting my flat lays, my photography, even like invested in like a really nice camera and lenses and all that sort of thing. I had my husband build me like light boxes and props and all this stuff. 
and I had random photos go viral. Like I remember I had like these raw vegan cookies that I made and like it was just this beautiful flat lay, like place the cookies in strategic shapes and had like, you know, the rose petals and, and things. And it was very like, you know, aesthetically pleasing. Um, and this photo ended up with something like over 10,000 likes. It was crazy. Like people were just going wild over these raw vegan cookies I made. Um, and I had other photos that went viral, but there were also other things that I did um, to grow my account as well. Um, but I really focused on like my flat lays and my designs and like this whole account was just very like aesthetically pleasing. It was very... Uh, like I just really looked at how other food bloggers were pre presenting their food and I was just like, yeah, watching and learning and implementing that myself. So it was basically built on just this, uh, like the looks of the account, so to speak. Um, and the thing is I rarely showed my face on this account. Um, I, I, yeah, didn't really take many selfies for a lot of reasons. Um, this is like during my mama era. So I wasn't wearing a lot of makeup a lot of the time. Um, and yeah, you know, I was food blogging. I often probably had food all over my face. Who knows? Um, but I, I didn't really feel comfortable showing my face. So there was that. And the other thing from this, even though I had all these followers and these were engaged followers, like I had such great engagement and everything, but I hardly made any money from this venture. Um, so it's one thing to have a lot of followers, right? But to actually convert those followers into paying customers, unless you've got like some sort of st uh, strategy and social media is part of that strategy, then you're just wasting your time. Um, and I'd like to say like, yeah, I was just wasting my time with that account. But the thing is, nothing is ever a complete waste of time, right? Okay, what I learned from that particular account and from growing that account, I learned so much about like photography and everything. Um, so, and about growing social media accounts and all that sort of thing. So it was a really good opportunity, but um, yeah, ultimately I yeah didn't really <laughs> make any money from that. I made a little bit, but not much. Um, so my current, uh, main business account, Kyra Howarth, the official. I had originally grown this account to something like 43,000 followers. Um, in recent years, that number has been dropping and um, a, a few different reasons why this could be dropping, I actually don't know. Um, but that, that's probably another story, to be honest. Uh, so how I grew this account, I was really specific when I started this Instagram account about how I wanted to grow my followers. Um, and so I, I came into this account, like, you know, I was not a newbie to Instagram at all. I'd already been using the platform for quite some time before I started this account. So I knew like what would, what would work, what would help grow this account. Um, so I was really intentional about growing this account from the start. And one of my strategies was I was reposting others content with permission, uh, with tags as well, like putting credit where credit was due. And it was related content. Um, and that was interwoven with my own original content. Um, and so sometimes like these uh, trending photos, like they really took off and they went viral. And then sometimes my own content, it went viral. Uh, in fact, I've still got posts that I uh, made back then, uh, and this was like, I think it was about 2018, maybe 2019 that I started this account. And I've still got posts from around that time that are still getting likes, they're still getting shares, and they've got like thousands of likes on them as well. So, um, but the thing is, like, even though I, you know, had all these followers come in and I went viral so many times with the content that I was sharing, again, the higher numbers did not equal higher sales. And there may be a few reasons for this. Um, yeah, there's there's always lots of different reasons that we could go into. Um, and one of these things that I really wanna talk about here is I feel like this account got shadow banned. Uh, and so that could mean when like Instagram kind of cracks down depending on maybe what hashtags you're using or other things that are happening with the account. And so I'm really not sure exactly what happened. And I think this could be partly um, why this account's losing followers. But anyways, that's a, probably another whole story. Um, but what this has taught me, what this whole thing has taught me is that 
it's uh, quality over quantity that really matters when it comes to posting on social media. So when I started off and I was like really just going for, you know, the, the trending stuff to go viral real fast, I was even posting on that account probably twice a day. And being really strategic with how I was growing that account. And once I kind of, you know, got it to a good spot, um, I was posting less frequently. But in that initial building phase, I was posting a lot. Um, and it was, it was a lot of work. Uh, but I found that the quality matters more so. And so these days I'm posting less often, like maybe only not even once a day. Like I, I will have a few days where I don't even post um, because I'm all about that work-life balance these days. But I'm focusing on more quality posts, things that are going to be more impactful for my followers and just being like more strategic in a way with, okay, rather than like really pushing myself to post every day, even if I don't really know what I'm posting about, just going in there with like something that's really clearly thought out uh, so that I can, yeah, share my best quality work with the world rather than my kind of subpar, but producing more of it. Um, and the thing that I have also learned from this whole experience is that, again, with the quality over quantity, um, it, it's not so much about like the, the quantity of the engagement, the reach. It's not so much about the numbers game because I know that I really got sucked into the numbers game a lot, uh, especially like during those early uh, months of building my account. It was always like, oh my God, this post has got so many numbers and now I've got like, you know, this number of followers. Um, and it, it became less about the numbers, but more about like the quality of uh, those engagements and the quality of the connections with my audience. Uh, so now it's more about like connecting more deeply with uh, my following, like through the DMs, through comments, and even like going onto their account and like seeing what they're up to, engaging with their stories and that sort of thing. So I, I think that's like probably one of the key things here. Um, and I'm going to talk about this in a bit, but uh, just to, like putting this out here now, one of the key things about social media and about growing authentically is about building those authentic connections and relationships with the people that you're following and who are following you. Um, so I've now also started a few other Instagram accounts for my other business projects. Um, and I'm really focusing on this more like authenticity and originality rather than just growing my followers, because I know that, um, it's, it's the quantity, uh, the quality over quantity that really matters. So focusing on, yeah, doing these things I'm about to share with you, these three tips for manifesting more followers for your social media while staying authentic. Um, so yeah, here's, here's what I'm doing um, with my new business ventures and here are the tips that you can implement as well. So tip number one is showing up. So showing up is way more important than not showing up at all. Uh, consistency is absolutely key. So consistency, consistency doesn't necessarily mean showing up every single day, but it does mean like finding a rhythm that works for you, for your business, finding like, you know, whether that is daily, maybe it's weekly, maybe it's something in between, just finding a rhythm that works for you so that you can show up with more consistency. Because if you keep showing up, you keep showing your face, you keep showing up with your offerings, even if you've got low engagement, like it's still reaching whoever needs to see this at the time. Okay. So keep showing up. And I know that can feel like really, uh, like you might feel quite unmotivated, especially if like you have such a small following and you're not really reaching many people. That's okay. Just keep showing up because like I said, like with my, um, my first business Instagram account, like it was practice. It was practice, right? Like I made no money from that, <laughs> hardly. Um, but I, you know, it was really good practice. So use this time while you're still building your account, while you're still growing your account, keep showing up, keep being consistent. This is just a practice run and soon you'll have all these followers, right? <laughs> um, so just keep showing up in a way that works for you, finding your own rhythm. Okay, so that's tip number one, show up, okay? If you don't show up, people aren't gonna find you. Um, number two is to get strategic. Okay, so showing up is one thing. Okay, so you can show up every day, show your face, like, you know, just do a little caption about how you're feeling or whatever, that's cool. But if you're getting strategic, this can really help you, especially if you have no idea what to post. Because let's face it, probably one of the reasons why you're not showing up every day on your socials is because some days you wake up and you're like, 
I know I need to post on social media today, but I don't know what I'm posting. And like with so many women in like, like my sort of age bracket who are being diagnosed with things like ADHD, it's no wonder like we wake up and we feel so overwhelmed and it's like, oh my God, I've got to post on social media. I've got to do all these things. And like we just end up not doing any of it. So one of the key things that I have found to be really helpful with getting strategic with my social media while allowing me to stay true to my authenticity is to create content pillars. So what I mean by this is that you come up with a few different subjects and these are the subjects that you're going to continuously post about. So for example, uh, with my, I have a yoga account because I teach a lot of yoga. So one of my like separate little side uh, hustles is um, my yoga. Uh, so yeah, I've started up this separate yoga account recently and I was like, okay, I'm going to get really strategic with this so that I know exactly what I'm posting and that way I'm going to keep showing up on this account. So I came up with a few different uh, content pillars. Uh, Saturdays are sutras. So I go into like a yoga sutra, like that's the plan. Anyway, every Saturday. On Sundays, I share about my classes for the week ahead. On Monday, I'll often talk about something to do with the moon. So because I do like a lot of moon stuff with my yoga, it just kind of felt right. Um, Tuesday, I focus on an asana, so an actual pose. Um, and then Wednesday is just kind of like general yoga musings, whatever happens to be on my mind for that particular week. Um, so those are like my five content pillars for my yoga account. Um, but like it could be anything for you. Like you might think of a few different things that might be related. Maybe like one of your content pillars could be an inspirational quote, if that's your thing. Uh, maybe you do like a, a tarot card every Tuesday, or maybe, you know, you come up with these different things and it can be really helpful as well. Sorry if you can hear my dogs in the background, by the way. Um, it can be really helpful to think about like the different days of the week and just assign um, each day or even just pick like five days or whatever works for you and assign those days a content pillar. So that way you just know, okay, it's Wednesday. This is what I post about on Wednesdays and give yourself some flexibility within that too. Um, like as I was just saying, my content pillars for my yoga page, I was like, I didn't do any of that <laughs> these past few days. I just kind of did my own thing. Um, and that's cool too. Give yourself flexibility because one, it's, it's important to keep showing up and to stay uh, authentic and true to the message that you have to share. And if that doesn't align with your content pillars, that's fine, but they are there if you need that strategy and that backup plan. Um, and so within this like strategy, I also want to just remind you, like don't get too caught up with how the grid looks. I hear from so many people who, you know, they want to post all these things and they're so worried about messing up their grid, their Instagram grid. Because if you know, like you go to your profile and, you know, you might have like every alternate tile is a, is a color. And then, yeah, you might, <laughs> you might have this like system going on with your grid, but don't get too wrapped up in that perfectionism. Okay. Because like, honestly, I love the time people are not necessarily coming to a profile and seeing your grid. Okay. The amount of views that your actual profile gets is quite low compared to how many people just like find your post, like, you know, on the feed or like using the search function or something else. Like it's, it's actually quite rare for someone to go through to your profile. And usually if they do, it's already someone who's engaged with your work. They may have seen like your post come up in their feed and then they've clicked through because maybe they want to click that link in your bio. So it's not like they're looking through to like, you know, see how pretty your grid is. Don't worry about your grid. Don't get caught up in perfectionism. Just keep posting. Don't worry about stuffing your grid up. Um, so the thing is within your strategy, I want you to create content that feels aligned with you. Um, and like, I guess the thing that I want to say here is like, don't make funny reels if that's just not who you are. Like, I remember when reels started coming out and everyone was making these like really funny reels and I was like, oh my God, this is so funny, but oh my God, now I need to make these funny reels. And that's just not me. I'm not like the, the comedian. I'm not the joker. It's just not me. I'm not the entertainer. Um, and so like I was spending like way too long, like trying to make these funny reels and it was sucking up so much of my time and energy. And, you know, I did a few of them and I was like, you know what, this is just not worth it <laughs> because it's not in alignment with me. It's not 
uh, who I am authentically. And it wasn't really making that much difference for me to show up and do a funny reel. Like, yes, like there are some people out there who do such a brilliant job of these and you guys just keep doing your thing. But if you're one of those people like me and, you know, you're just not naturally that person who makes jokes or can make people laugh, like just don't worry about it. Do the thing that feels more aligned and authentic for you. And don't stress about like, you know, creating picture perfect photos or like hand drawn illustrations if that's not you either. Like just do the things that are authentic for you that are in alignment with you without feeling like you need to do what everyone else is doing. Okay, so that's tip number two, getting strategic while, you know, still being in alignment with who you are. And now my third tip, and this one is possibly the most important one and the one that's going to create the most traction within your business. So that is use social media to make connections. Because I feel like a lot of the time people just don't understand that social media is like the whole point of it is to be social, right? It's called social media for a reason. So think of social media as a place to be social and to connect with other people. Keep it light and engaging. Like you can start conversations, build your people skills. Um, as someone who like was, um, you know, I was born in the eighties, grew up through the nineties. Um, like, you know, after school, like when I was a kid going into high school, like we'd come home and we'd be chatting on <laughs> MSN Messenger and things like that. Um, and like online chatting kind of just comes naturally to my generation, I feel. And so you can continue to use that sort of energy to like, you know, do your online chatting, but as an adult and do that same sort of thing that you may have done when you were younger. Um, because I remember when I was younger, I had so many online friends and I you know, didn't really have many friends at school. Like, <laughs> and it actually like the same is true even in my adult life now. Most of my friends are actually my online friends. <laughs> um, and like, that's how you use social media. Use it to make connections. Like get into those DMs, engage with other people's stories. Like, send messages to people that you want to send messages to. It's okay. You're allowed to connect with other people. You don't have to be completely anonymous on social media. Use it as a place to connect with people and to connect with them authentically. Um, so find people who uh, you resonate with, maybe like looking through hashtags or like looking at other accounts or searching for people uh uh, that, you know, maybe, you know, or even like looking at people that you know in real life and follow them on social media and, you know, start up the conversation. Like you can send people a DM and like, just, uh, like cultivate that higher engagement with these followers through creating quality conversations. Um, I can't tell you like just how much this has improved, my business by focusing on the quality of these engagements rather than the quantity. So having like a few like really engaged followers who I'm, you know, connecting with in my DMs, like on a regular basis, they have actually become like some of my top paying clients who have literally given me thousands of dollars over the years because they are so engaged with my work. So DMs work, messages work, those private messages on social media, it absolutely works because when you're doing that, you're creating these authentic connections with people in a real honest and raw way. And yeah, that's so much powerful than like, you know, having a reel that goes viral and gets like 10,000 likes. Like, <laughs> trust me, those DMs, do not overlook those. Um, and honestly, like some of my best friends I have met on social media as well. So not only like, is it going to have this great impact on your business, but it can also help your own friendships and social life as well. So instead of feeling uh, like, you know, social media is fake and uh, like following strategies just that just don't feel authentic to you, by now you're beginning to learn how to overcome your visibility blocks and use social media in a way that feels authentic and natural for you in a way that's really aligned with uh, you know, the the message that you're here to share with the world and in alignment with who you naturally are without trying to be someone who you're not. 
So if you're interested in learning more about growing your social media authentically and by focusing on quality rather than quantity, this is just one of the things that we cover inside the Soul Aligned Business Mastermind. So we are officially starting on the new moon and solar eclipse in Aries on the 9th of April. And this is a six month business group mastermind that will help you start grow and evolve your own business in alignment with your soul's blueprint. We weave in business astrology and mindfulness um, and like a lot of other energetics as well as practical business strategy so that you can grow your business in alignment with who you naturally are. We cover social media as well as lots of other marketing techniques as well as so many other things. We dive into like pricing and sales, developing your offerings, uh, your uh, so many other things. I'm like just having a mind blank because there's so many beautiful things that we cover. We cover design. We cover like the aesthetics. Uh, so like I was talking about like the flat lays and that sort of thing that I used to do. Um, we go into a bit of that, designing your social media. So it's it's pretty and aesthetic looking um, as well. So many other things that are going to have a real impact on your clients, like looking at the energetics of your business so you can find out who it is that you're meant to be working with, the work that you're actually here to do and Oh, so many, so many things, so many things. So we are starting really soon. Time is running out to join. So if you are interested in joining me for these next six months to grow your business in alignment with your soul's blueprint, click the link in the show notes below or go go to kyrahoworth.com slash S-A-B-M. S-A-B-M for Soul Aligned Business Mastermind. So as you now know the keys for the right way to grow your social media following, I want you to take away those insights that you've had from today's episode about how you're going to start growing your social media in a way that feels authentic to you. So like, you know, maybe you love doing those funny rules and you love being the comedian. Like you just keep doing that hilarious sort of stuff online. That is totally like fine if that's who you are. But if that doesn't feel authentic and real for you, then maybe you'll find your own way to uh, expand your reach and overcome your visibility blocks in your own style. Um, So I hope that this has been really helpful for you. Stay magical, stay manifesting and stay tuned. I will speak with you in another episode really soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Moon Manifesting Podcast. If you are curious about working with the moon, you can read my book, Moon Manifesting, or join us inside the Moon Manifesting Coven. You'll find the links in the show notes or go to kyrahoworth.com.